Hello designers, welcome back to another new video on our Figma UI Kit series. So this is going to be the last video on this playlist. But if you're new here, I would suggest you to start with the first video because that'll give you a bit of a context on what we are doing on the series. And you can find that video on the card somewhere at the top. So if you've already been following me on the series, we are good to go. So in our today's video, we're going to see how we can create interactive banner carousels. So we'll see a demo of this on the UI kit and then we'll see how we can create that from scratch. So without any further ado, let's jump straight on my screen and get started. So as you can see, this is the UI kit that I shared with you. And here we have the main components that we see here, but let's go back to the demo or the playground here. Just drop in an asset or the local component. So this is your banner carousel. So I'm just gonna drop in this one from here. So this one would basically fill up the whole screen, right? From the right side, you can choose the number of banners that you want. So you can just switch it to three and the dots automatically gets updated and you can change the selected one as well. So if you want to do that, that is also possible. And this is the type of banner. So you can choose between text banner and the normal banner as well so those are the different options that we have and you can also play around with these right so you can give it some rounded corners and still it would work fine you can also change the size of this and it should not affect anything so if i go ahead and play this and as you can see i can swipe through these and on reaching the last one right so it goes back to the first one so it's kind of an infinite carousel but this is a small trick to do it so it's not the proper way to do it but it's a small hack with which you can achieve this and then this also works on click so i can just click here and it works as well so now let's jump onto a fresh new Figma file and see how we can create this. So for that, I'm going to take a fresh new file here. And first thing I'm going to drop, drop in a frame and then I'm going to drop in this example image of the carousel just to see what we need as a reference. So the first thing we need is a rectangle for adding the image. And then we have these dots and nothing else, right? But actually we need a couple of other things as well. So to add the controls and things like that, and we'll get to know that while creating the carousel itself, right? So the first thing I'm going to take in a rectangle or a frame. So so I'm just going to take this one and we leave the width at 375. So that is for the mobile and the height. Let's give it at 250. So this should be good. So this is a frame and we got to add images to this one, right? So for that, we are going to use a plugin called as Unsplash. So Unsplash is a plugin which gives you stock images for free. So just search for this and run it. And here we have the plugin and you can search for different images, right? So I'm just going to go for, let's say nature. And here we can choose different images. So I'm I'm just going to choose this one and we get directly imported into our frame. So I'm just going to duplicate this and create three. So I want three options. So let's change these images. So for this one, I'm going to choose this. And for the last one, I'm going to choose this. So there we go. We have three different images and I'm just going to close it. The next thing you want to do is select all of these and add it into an auto layout so that we can directly remove anything and add things easily in the future. So I'm just going to press shift A and that will create an auto layout on these three images. So that is the first thing and our first part is done. The next thing is to create these dots that we see here. So for that, just zoom in slightly and we are going to create this using frames or you can also use rectangles. It's up to you. So I'm just going to take a rectangle here and let's leave this at, let's say three. So that's quite small. Just going to zoom in right here. The width of the selected one should be more. So we can keep the selected one at 24. And if you want, you can give rounded corners for this as well. That will look good. So it'll look like small pills. So just giving it rounded corners and just duplicate this and we'll create the rest of the things. So this one should be shorter, the unselected ones. And this is the next one, right? So three options and we have three dots here. Select all of these and create an auto layout, shift A, and that will create an auto layout for this. And now it'll automatically change, right? So even if you duplicate anything or remove anything, the width of this will automatically adjust to the content inside it, right? So that is the advantage of using auto layout. And now that we have this one, the first one, you could leave it at a primary color so that it shows it's selected, or you could also use white and this one at gray that that's up to you the styling of it so this one we have it ready and we are going to place this on our image itself so we'll just place it right here so as you can see if you use a color uh, you can see that it doesn't work so well so we'll switch this back to white so that is white and these should be a uh, gray so i'm going to give it the neutral gray that we have here and that will show that this is selected and the visibility is also good so that is a good thing to do and the next thing is we want to frame this inside the main frame that will clip out everything else and just show the first image on our screen. So for that, I'm just going to take a frame here just for the image one and just the width should be 375. So I'll just fix that first. This should be 250. So we have a frame. We'll just drop this inside a frame. So I'm just going to drop this inside a frame. And also this dots is already gone inside. So we don't have to worry about that. But if you notice the dots went inside the first frame that we created here, we don't want that to happen. This should be freely available on a parent. So I'm going to select this and take it outside to the frame. And that way it 
it'll be freely available on this one. And if you click on this main frame here and enable clip content or disable it, you can see that the rest of the content gets hidden behind the frame. So that is why we created this main frame for this. So a basic structure is ready, but there is one more thing to this. That is two rectangles for creating the controls. So we'll get to know more about that while creating the interactions. But for now, just uh, we'll create this and keep it. So we are just basically creating two rectangles right here so that we can add interactions to it. Take it completely, uh, just filling the complete container. So that is 375 by 250. Yes, that looks good. So we have created this and we want to have it has two halves, right? So for that, we can use the math function here. So I'm just going to tap here and divide this by two. And that way we can have two halves. So one is on the left and one is on the right. So this will basically act as controls for our carousel so that we can swipe or click to the left or to the right, right? So that is the reason we have created this and we don't want any color on this. So we'll select both of these and change the opacity or the fill to zero. So these are just options or control pads so that the user can tap to the left and to the right. So we'll also name this so that it's more uh, easy while adding the interactions. So this is your right box and this is your left box. So there we go. We have all the things that we need for creating the carousel. Everything is ready. We just have to create the component out of this and add start adding variants, right? So I'm just going to remove this and place this at the top and we'll create a component. So I'm just going to create the component here and add a variant. So we need three variants, right? So the first one is selected here. The second one will be selected and here the third one would be selected. So we have all the different states here. Just we have to change the actual look of it. So if I click this and select the main frame here and align it to the center, the first image would be visible. And then we need to change this one right here. So I'm just going to select this and move it to the right. And that will change the position of this. And it will basically switch. It look like switching to the next uh, carousel, right? So that is done. And going to this one here, I'm going to select the main frame here for changing the photos and align it completely to the right. So I'm going to use this right option. Basically what is happening while I'm aligning is the image is moving uh, inside this frame at different positions. So that is what is happening. I'm just using the option to align it completely to the right because the last image has to be shown. So I'm clicking the right align and that is done. And here we need to change this to the complete right. So I'm just switching the position here, command uh, bracket up and bracket down. So that will bring it to the complete right. So the states are ready and uh, we just need to add the interactions now. So for that, I'm going to go to the prototype tab here and select the frames or the rectangles that we created, which will act as a banner uh, controls. So the right control control basically has to on click go to the next frame here. So on click next frame auto animate at 300 milliseconds looks good. And one more thing here is as I showed you the user can also swipe. They can use the gesture of swipe to move to the uh, next image. So right now it's on click. So to add another interaction again select the right and add a new link to the next one. And this would be on drag right. So on drag same thing auto animate with gentle and 300 milliseconds which is good. So that is the interactions two interactions that you got to add to each of those control rectangles. So I'm going to select the next one on the right tab. This should go to the next variant on click again, another interaction. This would be on drag with the same interaction. So everything looks good. And I'm going to select the third one. So here on the third one, once you do the right, it basically has to go to the first one back again, right? So that is a trick where you do uh, the continuous uh, carousel swiping. So once on the third one, the user does the swipe, they basically has to go back to the first one, right? So this is can happen on click or on drag as well. So I'm dragging the second interaction. So one is for the drag and one is for the click. That is fine. And here we added for the right. All the rights are done. Let's add the left one as well. So I'm going to select the first one on left. Once the user does a left drag or a left click, they have to go back to the previous one, which will be the third one, right? So on drag of this, I'm going to drag this to the third variant on click, which is fine. Adding a new interaction for the drag as well. So drag and on click going back to the third variant, which is fine. And in this case, the left one has to go to the first one, right? So from the second one, once the user does a back, they go to the first one. So there we go. The first left is done and another one with the drag as well. So I think all the interactions are done. Okay, we need to add for the third one as well. So on the third one, if the user swipes back, they go back to the second variant on drag as well. They go back to the second variant. So all our interactions are ready and I think they should work fine. For that, I'm going to take a new frame right here and then drop in the component that we created. So here we have it. Just going to drop it 
right here, align it to the center and let's play this and see how this works. Here we have it. So let's try the click first. So I click it and it works fine. So on the third, it comes back to the first. From the first, it goes back to the third. So that is also fine. Now let's try the swipe, right? So I swipe and as you can see, it works amazing. So from the third, from the second to the first. So there you go. That is how we can create this simple banner interaction using swipe and click as well. And you also got to notice that this is not the perfect way of doing it because we used left and a right control here. So the user can't swipe to the right from here. They always have to do it on the right rectangle that we created here. Or if they want to swipe to the left, they always have to do it on the left rectangle that we created, right? But this is a good way of doing it. It's a very simple way of doing it and they can achieve uh, the swipe and the click at once. So yeah, that is how we can create an interactive banner carousal in Figma. You can uh, do the other things like adding the number of options uh, same way like we did in our previous videos. So if you want to see how to add number of options or the number of images, you can check the previous videos that we created and I showed you clearly how we can do that by just duplicating the variants and creating a new variant property. So it's pretty simple. Check the previous videos and you'll be able to do it very easily. So that's it for this video and this is the last video on this playlist. So we saw how we created different uh, interactive components on this whole series. And if you want this series to continue, do let me know in the comments below as I keep adding different components to the UI kit. I'll make sure to create the videos for that as well, right? And if you found this helpful, definitely leave a like and subscribe. That will really help the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.